Okay, so I wanna talk about working with photographers. It's something as wedding videographers, we constantly have to get better at because so often we either just don't pay attention to the photographers or we're just upset the whole time. We're not really building an amazing relationship. Now, what I wanna say is, well, learning how to work with photographers is one of the best things that you could do as a wedding filmmaker because getting really good relationships with photographers is gonna propel your business immensely forward because they're gonna be some of your biggest advocates on social media, posting about your work, and also some of the people that are really gonna help on the wedding day make your wedding film the best it can be. But if you don't know how to work with photographers, it can be a nightmare. So. I just wanted to make this video because I get questions all the time, whether it be through email or through our private group for our wedding course. How do you guys, how do you work with photographers? What do you do if the photographer is a jerk? Or what do you do if you've never worked with a photographer before? So I'm gonna share some of our favorite tips to keep in mind, and this is constantly changing. We're constantly bettering ourselves with how to work with photographers. And the first tip that I have is to sympathize. So. I just want you to put yourself in the photographer's shoes for a second. So for us, as wedding filmmakers, every single wedding that we shoot has a photographer present. We've learned really well how to work with photographers. Whereas, I mean, I think we've only shot one wedding in our entire career where there hasn't been a photographer there, which is crazy. But for a photographer, I mean, it is crazy rare that they would work with a videographer. I mean, most photographers I talk to, like still currently, like weddings we just shot a month ago, I'm like, hey, so do you work with a lot of videographers? And they're like, you know what? Um, like last year I only worked with two and I shot 25 weddings. And I'm like, two? And these are like not random, like just starting out photographers. These are high-end photographers in the market that you know Forestry Films were trying to also reach and they're like, yeah, we didn't, we worked with two videographers. And I'm like, two videographers? Like, that's it? And then I'm like, well, how was your experience working with them? And they're like, well, it was okay. One of them wasn't that good and the other one was okay. So really their whole impression of videographers, because they only have two that they've really ever worked with, maybe four if they've done two wedding seasons. So their impression really isn't that good. So you have to keep that in mind when you're working with them because their impression of working with a videographer more than likely isn't good and they, don't, they haven't had a really good experience. So the first thing is to sympathize and realize that. So when you come into the wedding day, don't react shocked if they're a little standoffish because I have a lot of videographers be like, oh, the photographer you know, doesn't know if working with me is gonna be good. They're kind of being a little standoffish. That's okay, like that's normal because they hardly ever work with video people. So understand that and that's gonna make the whole day go a lot smoother. So the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to establish trust. This is huge. This is something that we have started to do that's made a massive massive difference. So right before the wedding day, um, I always find the photographer on Instagram. I make sure I follow their account and I make sure to leave a couple of thoughtful comments on some of their most recent posts. Rather than this looks awesome, be like, oh man, I loved what you did here with this couple or this is the most, if it's a lot of times the photographers we work with are so insanely talented and we're like, man, this is, I've never seen a photo like this or like I love what you did with the colors here or the pose or whatever it is. And then I also make sure to message them and just be like, hey, can't wait to work with you or because we, as a company, we send out a questionnaire to the bride about 30 days before the wedding. And on that questionnaire, we say, hey, what's your photographer's number? We'd love to get in contact with them just to make sure that they have everything they need from us for the wedding day. So I'll always text them and I'll say something like, hey guys, cannot wait to work with you tomorrow. Uh, your work's really rad. If it is, I mean, don't just say it's cool if it's not, but find something genuinely awesome about them and their work to comment on. And it's so crazy, like we've gotten replies back like, oh my gosh, like you're texting me the day before? What? All the other big videographers we've ever worked with have just shown up, kind of taken over the whole show and just been jerks. And so just like we're scared of photographers being jerks, they're kind of scared of us being jerks. And so by sending that text before, it does so many things and it just really, really gets them excited about working with you because they're like, man, this company actually cares about me. And I also, at the end of that text I send them, I'm like, hey, if there's 
anything you need, just shoot me over a text or give me a call. This is my personal number and can't wait to work with you tomorrow. And so that way, when we actually see each other on the wedding day, they're like, oh, David, like, cool. And we're like, there's much more friendship there because I've already, you know, talked with them and it's not like, oh, here's this weird videographer. And another thing you want to make sure of is take out time, like plan for time for when the photographer walks into the room, make an effort to stop what you're doing, put your camera down, and after they've introduced themselves to the couple, just be like, hey, like so awesome to meet you, and I just want you to know that like we're really pumped about shooting in this wedding with you, and just let us know if you need anything during the day, or let us know if you know, we're ever in your way and we really want to make this the best for the couple. And that right there, the whole heart of that, you don't have to copy that phrasing exactly, but the whole heart of it is we are here to work together, not separately, because at the end of the day, both of your bosses is the couple and you want to make sure that the couple gets amazing photos and also amazing video. So establishing trust is huge and it's really changed the game for us. I mean, I've, I've even had some photographers just completely flabbergasted that we would reach out. They're like, oh my gosh, like no one, no one does this. So do it, it will really, really change your approach with working with photographers is to establish that trust. So the next thing is communication, because as you know, with every good relationship, communication is key. And I would say it's pivotal with a wedding photographer, wedding videographer relationship. And the reason being is they have no idea how you work. They have no idea where you usually place cameras. They have no idea what you need. This is, I mean, if you think about it, a wedding day is, it has a huge possibility for disaster. Imagine working at a full-time job and you're expected to perform probably one of the biggest tasks that a job could ask of you with all new people that you've never worked with a day in your life. I mean, that's kind of what a wedding day is. There's it's this massive day that has so much money wrapped up in it and literally all your employees are people you've never worked with before. You don't know their temperament, you don't know how they work or anything like that. So that's why it's so important to communicate. So what we do is before the day even starts, I will walk up to the photographer and say, hey, you know, like this is who we are. I tell them like, hey, this is kind of how we do things. You know, um, for most of the day, we're kind of flies on the wall, but during the ceremony, we like to have cameras here, here, and here. And what were you thinking for the first look? And this is kind of how we do portraits and it's super casual. Like you don't want to just come with this like, okay, this is the, what we do. What you want to do is just very casually be like, hey, what were your plans for this? And what were your plans for that? And then that will really, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this person like actually wants to work with me and doesn't want to step over my toes all day. So that's really key. And then another thing that's really key is right before the ceremony, because I think that's often the time where videographers or photographers can get the most upset because there's so many moving pieces is to take five minutes before the ceremony starts, walk up to the photographer and be like, hey, like I just want you to know this is kind of where we're gonna be for the ceremony, where are you planning on being? And they'll be like, oh, I'm planning on being here, here and there. I'm like, okay, perfect. Well, I'll make sure that we're not in your way and I'll have Harmony stand right by you the whole time and things like that and they, that just helps make the whole ceremony go way smoother. And if you get that right, and they're like, man, they were awesome to work with during the ceremony. They weren't in my shots, and then we're saying they weren't in our shots. The rest of the day goes great. And I would say the next thing, though, after the ceremony that I know a lot of videographers have questions about is how do you communicate the most effective, effectively during portraits, like couple photos? Because... And you know, uh, things can get pretty heated because the photographer really wants epic photos and you as a videographer want epic videos also. So there can be this clash, especially if the photographer is a totally different style than your style of video because, and there's no perfect style, but imagine, so we've had this happen where our, our style is a lot more authentic, kind of unposed, and we like to do more adventurous poses with the couple um, or direction because we don't really pose but more we like to do more adventurous things with them whereas a photographer might have a very fine art style or maybe their style is very very uh, they use a lot of flash or things like that which isn't our style so sometimes we run into issues where we actually can't really shoot while the photographer's shooting because it's just not a pose that fits our style with the couple hired us for so what do you do so here's a couple things so when 
Portraits start, I always let the photographer start first. So I let them take the couple for five, seven, 10 minutes and just really take the reins so that they can get comfortable, they can get comfortable with the couple. And that whole time, I'm really just looking and watching to see, okay, what is the photographer gonna do and how do they work? Kind of what's their communication style with the couple? And also like what kind of direction does the couple respond to? And because that helps me know that when I come in and do video work, I can already have all these little thoughts in my head and being like, okay, like I saw the couple pose in a couple different ways, so I know that works or that doesn't work, and I can come in and get my shot quickly and efficiently. So when the photographer is done, what I always say is before, so say the couple's in a really rad lighting situation or pose that I also really want to get because I'm like, that would look awesome for video, is. I will walk up to the photographer just right by her side or his side and just really quietly, I'll just be like, hey, like um, before we move spots, can I just grab one thing at this location before we move? And they're like, oh yeah, no, sure, no worries. And what's so cool is photographers, as surprising as it might sound because you might have had a bad experience with a photographer, they actually appreciate when you take the couple for a little bit of time because it gives them time to think, like like a lot of times photographers are on all the time that they barely have time to think. So if you're taking over for like two or so minutes at one location, it gives them a couple minutes to rest and to be like, okay, where do I wanna take the couple next? What do I wanna do with them? And in the perfect world, it really makes their photos better so that they have time to think. But of course, when you do, take over and it should only be for one or two minutes. Don't completely take over to where the photographer is kind of like, okay, like I need to get my shots. Just go in, get what you need and go out. And then before, this is key, before you leave and just like drag the couple somewhere else, just look at the photographer one more time and be like, hey, I got what I need. Did you need anything else here with them? That just speaks volumes to the photographer because they're like, oh my gosh, like again, they care about like what I need and then what you'll find is they will reciprocate that and they'll at the next location because they're like oh he did it to me they'll be like hey did you want anything and then all of a sudden you find yourself not having to fight anymore and it becomes this amazing collaborative effort and some of my favorite weddings have been where I'm, we're just both on the same page photographer and me because she'll come up with an amazing idea. I'm like, oh, I never would have thought of that. That's so awesome. And we actually just did an elopement where the photographer was incredible to work with. And she was, we were giving her ideas and then she was like, oh, I think this would be really cool for video. I'm like, oh, I didn't even, like think of that. That would be awesome. And then we're all hanging out with the couple and the couple's getting better photos, better video. And that's really where you want to be. And communication is the path to get there, to make sure that this photographer relationship is gonna be one that, it's not just gonna work on the wedding day, but the best thing is when you work with an amazing photographer and then you keep working with them at other weddings, it's really like that's where the magic starts to happen and they start to refer you, it's just amazing. So definitely communicate. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is problem solving. Because I will admit, not every time is roses. There are times when photographers do not want to work with you. They are complete and utter jerks. What do you do? Now, we've had this happen a couple times in our career, and it's hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is difficult, but it's, it's only happened a handful of times. Most of the time, this is not going to be your experience. But there are some photographers who really just have a bad stigma about video, and they're not willing to work with you at all. So the first thing, don't change any of the steps. So first, make sure you reach out to them. First, make sure that you're really considering them throughout the day, making sure that they got their shots and things like that. But there will be come, come a time, I'd say most of the day, you just just kind of let them do their thing. Try to not step on their toes, you know, really try to be as accommodating as possible because it's not worth just the fighting that would happen if you're trying to just get all up in their grill and they're gonna be upset at you, it's gonna make the couple feel awkward, you really don't wanna go there. But I will say during portraits, if the photographer is not allowing you to get any video stuff, if they're kind of like, hey, you know, I'm the main photographer of the day. It's nice that you're coming along. We've had this, I mean, this, this does happen where photographers will treat videographers like second-class citizens, kind of like, oh, it's, it's kind of cute that you're coming along, like kind of assisting with video, but like I was the one really hired for this day, so just kind of stay out of my way. 
it happens. So I do want to talk about this in a very respectful way. First off, one, you don't know the photographer's experiences with other videographers, so it literally could just be a misunderstanding. Him not realizing that, you know, like you're actually here to produce art and you're not like that other videographer that he worked with. So you should really try to prove him wrong. But in the effort that you can't, when it comes to portraits, because that's usually when heads butt the most, try a couple times, see like, hey, can I come in there and do some things? If they're just like, no, maybe when I'm done, then stop talking to the photographer and talk directly to the couple because the couple is ultimately the person who hired you. So if you find yourself not being able to get what you need for what the couple hired you to do during portraits, walk up to the couple and just be like, hey, would it be okay if I spent five minutes with you? It would be really awesome for your video and I know you guys will really love it when you see it. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, sure, awesome. And if they say yes, the photographer is not gonna say, anything because the photographer is not your boss the couple is and you're not the photographer's boss the couple is so if the couple wants to do something the photographer just has to be like okay i guess that's what we're doing so that's how to respectfully bypass and really get what you need when a photographer is really just not working with you and it's really sad when that happens because i really feel like it's a disservice to the couple and it just makes it just makes for really awkward vibes but you know when it happens do not match their jerk and sternness. That won't get you anywhere. Just be like, okay, that's happening and I'm gonna work around it. And if at any point, if for whatever reason, the couple's like, hey, why didn't you get that? And you really try to work in that shop, but the photographer might've not let you just be like, hey, you know, I really try to do that. But um, you know, the photographer is it was, it was just, really, just really hard. So that's, there's only so much you can do. Don't beat yourself up. Not every wedding you have to make the most incredible. You know, some weddings are just a little bit harder and just make sure to be respectful. But if it ever happens, usually going to the couple is a way to quickly go around that. So that's how you kind of work with problem areas or if the photographer is being a little hard to work with. So the last thing I wanna talk about when working with photographers is really building a solid relationship. I mean, I think a lot of videographers are scared in a way of photographers because they hear a lot of horror stories and vice versa. But I think we need to start thinking about photographers as like our friends, like as people that can actually like, oh my gosh, we might be able to work together again because photographers, really good photographers, are the best asset that you can have as a filmmaker because you can do style shoots together, they can refer you, you can do amazing elopements, it's just awesome. And so after the wedding, if you really liked working with a photographer, follow them on Instagram and keep up with them, continually comment on their photos, like if they're ever doing, if they need a model call or whatever, maybe you and your girlfriend or wife can do it for them, like really maintain that relationship because it's probably gonna be one of the best relationships you have in the industry. So don't just go in and go out of weddings, like really follow up with these people and they can become some of your biggest advocates in the future. So kind of closing it all out, Photographers are an amazing, amazing resource and they're incredible at what they do. And some of our favorite weddings have been with just amazing photographers. And just keep these things in mind when you're shooting a wedding is that your photographer is not your adversary. They are your friend. They're there to collaborate with you. And when you learn to work together with them in the ways I outlined, your weddings are gonna be infinitely better and who knows, you might even befriend a photographer at a wedding who then becomes your business partner down the road, which is exactly what happened with us. We met a photographer at some one of our first weddings, hit it off. He now works for us. He's one of our main photographers, also our creative director. He's just incredible. So always try to seek to build an amazing relationship and you won't regret it. All right, well, those are some of our favorite tips, my favorite tips for working with photographers. I'd love to hear what your guys' tips are because I know this is a constantly evolving conversation with working with photographers. And also last thing is I just put together this awesome ebook on how to raise your prices. It's the exact method and system that we at Forestry use to raise our prices every single year without losing bookings. I would highly recommend it. We actually um, spent a lot of time on the design, made it look really cool and minimal, and I'm pretty pumped about it. So if you're interested in how to raise your prices immediately, like literally this free ebook, and in the next, if, when you read it, you could be raising your prices already. I mean, what's not to love about that is uh, check it out. It'll pop up right here, a little link, and grab it. 
I know it's gonna be insanely valuable to you and I cannot wait to see you guys on the next video and don't forget to subscribe because we're coming out with a ton more content like this. All right guys, hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.